By definition, rational functions are function of the form f of x is equal to n of x all over d of x, where n and d are both polynomials and d of x should not be equal to zero. Now here are some examples of a rational function in its graph. Now for my first example, we have f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 all over x plus 1. You will notice that in this graph of a rational function, we have a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote represented by the two broken red lines. Now that's one unique feature of uh, a rational function. There is a, or most of the times we have a horizontal and vertical asymptote for a rational function, similar to our example number one. But sometimes we can have a rational function such as 4 all over x squared plus 1, where you are seeing a graph wherein we have a horizontal asymptote but no vertical asymptote. So this is one of uh, the patterns that you will encounter when we graph a rational function such as this. In our third example, we have f of x is equal to 2 all over quantity x minus 1 squared. And you will see that our vertical asymptote is right here. And the horizontal asymptote for this particular graph is our line right here along the x-axis. So this is or these are some of an example of rational functions and its graph. Now for today, we're going to learn how to find the domain of a rational function using an algebraic procedure. Now for our first example, we need to find the domain of the f of x which is equal to 2x plus 1 all over x squared minus 4. Now, from the definition that we discussed from the previous slide, we know that the denominator of a rational function cannot be 0, otherwise our function will be undefined. Now, for this particular example, to find its domain, we need to find the value or values of x wherein it will turn into 0 so we can try to stay away from that particular values and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to set the denominator equal to 0 and solve for x for that particular denominator. So in this case our denominator is x squared minus 4 and we're going to equate it to 0 giving us x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Now you will notice that x squared minus 4 is a special binomial which is a difference of 2 squared. And when we factor out this particular binomial, we can factor it out as x minus 2 times x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now by using the zero product property, we know that we have two values of x for this particular function which is x is equal to 2 and x equal to negative 2. Now these partic particular values of x's that we have solved here are the values of the x that we are trying to stay away from so that our rational function will exist because if x is equal to 2 and you plug it in to your values of your denominator, your denominator will turn into in, to 0 making your function undefined. And it's the same case for x is equal to negative 2. So therefore, the domain of our rational function is basically all real numbers except for these two values of x. So this is how we write our domain for our rational functions. All real numbers except for x is equal to 2 and x is equal to negative 2. And also, one of the ways that you can write your domain if you don't want to write it in complete sentences, you can use a mathematical symbol to represent your domain. And this is how we represent our domain using this notation, which is for all real number such that x is not equal to plus or minus 2. So this is one way of writing out your domain using mathematical symbol. And that is example number 1. For our second example, we need to find the domain of p of x. And our p of x is equal to 3x all over x squared minus 10x minus 24. So just like what we did on our previous example, all we need to do is to set the denominator to 0 and to solve for x for that particular equation. So we have x squared minus 10x minus 24, which is the denominator of our rational function, equal to 0. Now this one is also another special case because we can factor out this quadratic function and we can change it into x plus 2 
times x minus 12 is equal to 0. So this is the factor of our quadratic equation, which we can use in solving for x. So by zero product property, and by splitting this two terms into two, we'll have x plus two is equal to zero, and x minus 12 equal to zero. And solving for x, the two values of x when it's equated to zero will be x is equal to negative two, and x is equal to 12. So therefore, to write out the domain of this rational function, it will be all real numbers except for x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to 12. And the reason is, if we plug in the value of negative 2 to our quadratic equation, or 12 to this quadratic equation, the denominator will turn into 0, making our function undefined. So therefore, the domain, if you want to write it out in mathematical symbol form, you can write it out as for all real numbers such that x is not equal to negative 2 and x is not equal to 12. And that is how we find the domain of a rational function in this particular